Hi, Michael here from Go Engineer, and today's tech tip, we want to talk to you about the theory behind manual calibration on a high-end FDM Stratasys system. Now this is mostly going to pertain to the 360, 400, 380, 450, and 900 style systems. Now, I'm sure that somebody out there at some point in time has gone, the heck is this doing? Why is it doing that? I don't understand this. And if it leaves you feeling just like, I don't get it. Well, then we haven't done our job. So to counter that from happening to you, step in the other room. Let me show you an art project I've got that's going to demonstrate the theory behind manual calibration. Come on and join me. Okay, welcome to Go Engineers mystery world of calibration because <laughs> it is kind of freaky and you're like what the heck is going on and hopefully we can take some of the mystery out of this and you can be like i've got it i'm ready to go take on a calibration the fortis xyz calibration this is what your system is actually going to print out on a build sheet so let's talk about what it is what you're looking for and how to best dial in your machine Red in this case is equal to support material. Black is going to be equal to the model material. Now again, I apologize for my artwork because I am clearly not an art major. I did my best. I actually cheated and used a ruler for most of it. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for how the support tip sits in relation to the model. All right, in essence, digitally, we're going to be moving the support tip around so that it builds right next to the model tip. This is our end goal right here. These tips have a tool path that you want them building right next to each other, not on top of, not too far away. So we need to use this calibration to digitally say to the machine, you're right here for the model tip fixed. Your support tip is here. I need you to move so that you're building right next to each other. How does that work? When you're looking at the calibration, we're gonna blow this one section up. The model will extrude out these little hashes on either side of the numbers, which indicate thousands of inches of movement one way or the other. The support will run down the middle. Well, that's our goal is to be in the middle. When you look down through the calibration, you will see that it's too far to the left here, too far to the right here, but it's close to being centered right near at around six thousandths. So the goal when you're looking at this on one X and one Y is to find the location where the support is centered. I want it centered between the hashes. And so in this case, if I look at this, I follow down here and I'm saying, well, it's pretty much centered right between the 6,000s mark, and it's not even close over here. Perfect. This is going to be my adjustment. I will then do one Y. If I look across the top, I can see that right around the 2000s it appears to be centered, otherwise it tapers down, and here it's riding right across the top of the hashes all the way. So I know I've got a 2000s adjustments in negative Y, and a 6000s adjustment in positive X. In doing that, here's the theory. If I move this line down, 2000s, this will come in closer to being centered at zero. This will move down and be at zero, which is our goal. Our goal is to have zero at one X and one Y. If it comes out at both, that's great, but one is the goal. Moving this one over six thousandths, we'll then move this line over and this line over. So when we rerun the calibration job, the goal will then be that this will be at zero, centered, just like we see here, and the same will be the case for right there. So this is our goal. That's what we're trying to do is move this 6,000 over and 2,000 down. What does this look like? If we look at this drawing, our fixed tip is the model. Currently, according to this, we are 2,000s too high. We need to pull it down. And we are 6,000s too close. We need to move it over. By doing that, we will end up with this. Because right now, what we have is this. Model tip is fixed, support tip is up here. So digitally, we need to tell the machine, move down and over in this representation. So this is what we end up with. You may have to do this once or twice. We always use a rule of three on this. If you get to the third time and you cannot get this calibration to work, there's another issue. 
Call us up at that point. We can help walk you through what that might be. But you should be able to dial this in within three runs of this calibration. Now, finally, this inner square, that's actually your Z height, okay? X and Y, X and Y need to be less than or greater, less than or equal to, sorry, to two or two thousandths. So I need to have both of them, in this case we do not, I need to have both of them at two or less in order to check the Z height. And what you'll end up doing is you'll take off this top layer of support material and measure it. What does that look like? The system in the center square actually has come in and drawn model material below it. And then across the top, it will build the support. And what happens if it's too far off, like in this case, the support will droop and you will get a false reading on your height. Hence the reason we need it to be two thousandths or less so that this sits flat right across the top here and gives me an accurate height reading on my Z. So this is a Fortis XYZ calibration. I'm dialing in one Y, one X to get two zero. And once I get underneath the two or the two thousandths, I can then come in and check my center square by removing just the top layer of that support material and measuring it to get my Z height. X, Y, and Z will get me tips matched up, the appropriate height. My system's gonna be dialed in to start running. So again, all this is done digitally. We're just telling the system where to position itself on its starting point in order to make your system perform and give you the best parts possible. I hope that helps to clear that up and take some of the crazy mystery out of actually doing the calibration. Thanks. So I hope that gives you a pretty good idea then about the theory behind the manual calibration on a high-end FDM system. Please follow us at GoEngineer.com for all applicable links and like and subscribe to this video. Thanks for spending some time with me. Talk to you later. Bye.